Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video number 17. This is on compartmentalization. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> that's a big word. What does that mean? Well, uh, a better way to start is to talk about why cells are small. Um, and then another question I could ask is why are cells not infinitely small? Um, so why are cells small? Well, first of all, let's look at the size of some of these cells. So these are eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are mostly a little bit under a millimeter in length. Uh, prokaryotic cells, so things like bacteria and archaea, are going to be on the order of about a micrometer. And then small things like atoms are going to be on the level of a nanometer. But it looks like life, which is going to be eukaryotes and prokaryotes, uh, are going to be right in this kind of a sweet spot. Viruses, are they alive? Well, we could argue about that for a long time. In other words, life kind of is in this area. So it has uh, cell sizes about that big. Now, why are cells small, but not too small? If we think about it, uh, let's look at a cell here. So if this is a cell right here, so this is the cell membrane that goes around the outside. It's got a certain number amount of volume on the inside, and then it has surface area that goes around the outside. So this would be the surface area that goes around the outside. So we could figure that out. Um, but if I were to cut that cell into four parts, what would happen to the volume? The volume would stay the same, but the surface area would increase because we'd have all this surface area on the inside. Why is surface area good? It's because it allows you to get more nutrients in, to have more chemical reactions going on that, uh, on that membrane. And so if I even make it smaller, we get even more surface area. And so why are cells small? The reason cells are small is to increase the amount of surface area that you have. Great example of that would be a piece of wood. Uh, if you try to light a big piece of wood, you can't get it to start. But if you chop that into smaller bits of kindling, or even better yet, make it into sawdust, then you can get a huge amount of flames really, really quickly because you're increasing the surface area, or you're increasing the area along which we can have all these complex chemical reactions. And so uh, the goal of life is to increase surface area. And that's going to push cells towards the small end. Now, why are they not infinitely small? Well, we don't have living things this small, and the reason why is that you wouldn't be able to put hereditary material, you wouldn't be able to put the machinery of the cell inside it, and so they can't be infinitely small. But even within this slice of life, we find that there are actually two strategies. There is the eukaryotic strategy and the prokaryotic strategy. Prokaryotes are gonna be way smaller than eukaryotes. And how are they able to, eukaryotes, be able to be bigger? Well, that's through a process of compartmentalization. In, in other words, instead of making themselves really, really small, they have parts inside them that are small. And that allows them specialization, and it also allows them to increase surface area. Okay, so in this podcast, I'm going to talk about mostly eukaryotic cells. But know that cells can be prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Two types of prokaryotic cells are bacteria and archaea. Um, it doesn't mean that they're closely related. We are actually more related as eukaryotes to archaea than either of us are to bacteria. It just means that they have a similar life uh, style or a similar life strategy. So the domain eukarya shows compartmentalization. What that does is it's parts within the parts. So it allows us to specialize. So we can have parts of a cell that do specific jobs. And then we can increase the surface area. So we can increase the surface area of the cell without making the cell smaller. We just have parts inside it that are smaller. Uh, example of one thing that does both of these is the endoplasmic reticulum. It allows specialization, so there are a number of jobs done by the ER, and it also increases the surface area of, uh, for that cell for all these chemical reactions. So archaea and bacteria, if you look at, this is an E. coli, one of the most famous bacteria, and if you look at halobacteria, which is a salt love archaea, they both look almost identical. And the reason they look identical is they have a similar lifestyle. But the one thing that ties them together is that they're incredibly small. So this would be about two nanometers uh, or two micrometers, and these are about five micrometers, so about the same size. Um, they have the same kind of a shape, um, but they're both really small. Prokaryotes are all small. That's to increase surface area. Now, inside us, we have what are called mitochondria. Mitochondria are not living on their own. They require us for life, but they're about the same size as uh, both archaea and uh, bacteria. And the reason why we think is that mitochondria used to be uh, bacteria cells on their own that became part of our cells. 
And we now uh, use them for compartmentalization. The mitochondria inside our, our cells actually make ATP, and they're folded to increase uh, surface area. And so compartmentalization is simply having parts within the parts, or smaller parts inside the, uh, the, the larger uh, uh, relative cell. And so what it does is it increases surface area and increases specialization. Uh, now, our cells aren't made of Kleenex, but Kleenex is a great example of something that shows compartmentalization. In other words, a Kleenex box has Kleenex folded inside it to increase the surface area. In other words, if you just wiped your nose on the outside of the box, you wouldn't have much surface area to do that. And also, there's going to be um, specialization. In other words, the box on the outside, its job is to contain the Kleenex, and the job of the Kleenex is to wipe your nose on the inside. And so that's a real simple example of what a cell is doing. And so just to point to a few things, um, these are mitochondria inside a eukaryotic cell. Those generate ATP. Um, this could be a lysosome inside the cell. It digests material in the cell. This could be the Golgi apparatus inside the cell. It moves material, and this is the nucleus. It contains the DNA, contains the genetic material. Um, and so all these different parts of a cell have specific jobs. They do specific things. But if you look at it, they're highly folded, and the reason they're highly folded is to increase the surface area. The one that I want to talk about more specifically specifically is called endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum has two different parts to it. Um, this right here would be the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the reason why is if you look at it under the microscope, you see these little dots on the surface of it. And then this would be smooth endoplasmic reticulum. But uh, essentially, endoplasmic reticulum is a folded membrane. So it's folded over and over and over again. So you have this space on the inside. Uh, but what that allows it to do is increase the surface area, but it also allows it to specialize. And so what does the rough endoplasmic reticulum do? Well, you have to start with what do ribosomes do. So here's a ribosome attached to the rough ER. Are. Essentially what will happen is uh, we will have the ribosome out here in the cytoplasm of the cell. It will start having messenger RNA feed through it and it will start making a protein. After it gets a little bit down on that, um, the ribosome will attach to the rough ER and then it will actually make the protein inside the ER. So eventually that polypeptide will fold and it'll make a protein, and so that's going to be what these little green dots could represent. It's going to make a protein on the inside. And so what does rough ER do? Well, it really just does one thing. It makes proteins. We can then package those proteins within vesicles. They can move their way over to a Golgi apparatus and then move somewhere else inside the cell or even outside the cell. So rough ER essentially makes proteins. The smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes on its surface, but it doesn't mean it's any less important. Um, it's going to make uh, lipids. It's going to make steroids. It's going to be responsible for metabolism of carbohydrates or breakdown of carbohydrates. It, it regulates the calcium ion concentration inside the cell. Um, it detoxifies. It breaks down toxins inside the cell. And so the smooth ER shows a high amount of specialization. It does a number of different jobs. And those aren't done by different other parts of the cell. It's, it's simply done done by this one part of the cell. And so that's called a organelle. A organelle is going to essentially be a tiny organ. It's a part of the cell that allows for specialization. Um, an interesting side note on SER is that alcoholics have a much higher amount of SER than in their cells, especially in the liver, um, than a normal person's cells. And that's because they're constantly breaking down um, alcohol uh, and, and getting rid of the toxin. And so Endoplasmic reticulum is just one organelle inside eukaryotic cells, but again, what it does is increase the surface area and then does a specific job. And so I hope that's helpful.